Hi, this is Alan with Brew Monkeys. Welcome to Homebrew 101. Now, brewing may seem difficult to some, but actually, if you can follow a recipe, you can make beer. You're going to want to clean and sanitize your equipment. Uh, there'll be a boiling uh, process that you'll have to go through, a cooling down process, a fermentation process, and then a bottling process. Here's a basic ingredient kit. Today we're going to make a Weizen beer, which, which is a German wheat style beer. Let's get this thing open and have a look at what's inside. In kits like this, you'll usually find directions, which we will follow. You'll find bottle caps, which you'll need at the end of the process, priming sugar, and the priming sugar will be used to carbonate your flat beer. Yeast comes with a kit. It's typically a couple ounces of hops that you'll get with the kit. And probably one of the most important parts would be the malt extract. This is what the yeast feeds on to give you beer. And in this kit, we have two containers of malt extract, about 6.6 .6 pounds of malt extract. And that's your basic ingredient kit right there. Now before we get started on the components of an equipment kit, I want to say that by no means are you restricted to one style of beer. There are kits for every kind of beer that you like. So if you have a preference for pale ales, for IPAs, for lagers, uh, German wheat beers, it's all out there at any homebrew store. You can get the exact kind of beer that you want. Now the basic components of a kit Typically, what you're going to find is a thermometer. This is very important. You need to know the temperature of the wort, especially before you pitch the yeast. You have an auto siphon, which helps you siphon the beer. Very important piece of equipment. You have a thermometer, usually in these kits. A hydrometer. This is used to measure the specific gravity of your beer. It'll let you know if your beer is finished, and if you're interested, you can also find out the percentage of alcohol in your beer using a hydrometer. An instruction book is usually included in every kit. It's important to read those. This one happens to be a very short one, but a very concise one. An airlock. This keeps the bad air from getting into your beer, but allows the CO2 to bubble out of your beer. Usually there's a stopper included with that. Most kits have some kind of a sanitizer. It's necessary after you boil the beer to use a sanitizer. Everything that comes in contact with your beer after the boil has to be sanitized. There's a carboy brush and you'll use that to get inside of this, all the crevices and the tight spots in this glass carboy. There's a plastic fermentation bucket this can be used as a primary fermenter. It's great because it's got a big top on it and that allows you to get in there and clean. The problems with plastic is they do allow air to get in. Okay, That's not an issue when you do your primary fermentation. Usually brewers will transfer their beer after one week into a glass carboy and this does not let air in and this allows the beer to age for a while. So here you have it, all your basic components in a brewing kit. But there's one more thing that you're going to need, and that's over here. A five gallon batch will produce two cases of beer. That's 48 beers that you get to enjoy, 48 premium beers that you'll get to enjoy, and you've made it yourself. The three basic stages to making beer, that's brewing, fermenting, and bottling. In the brewing stage, you basically combine malt with hops, with water, and heat, and that gives you wort. In the fermenting stage, you combine that wort that you made with yeast and thyme, and that makes beer. Now, the people in the brewing industry like to say that brewers make wort, but yeast makes the beer. And then there's the bottling stage which is taking the flat beer that's fermented out, adding priming sugar, 
and again some time and you get carbonated beer. Now to help you with all those stages, to help you understand it, you may want to get a resource and there's some great books that are available at all homebrew shops such as the Brewer Master Bible, Home Beer Making from William Moore, The Complete Joy of Home Brewing by Charlie Papazian. By the way, this is not the most recent example, but we sold out of the most recent example, so I brought my original copy from home. This book is as useful as it was, I mean, as useful now as it was 20 years ago when I first bought it. And then there's Home Brewing, um, How to Brew by John Palmer, also an excellent book. All of these can found, be found at Brew Monkeys and any homebrew supply store here in Cincinnati. First thing you need to do is get your kettle up to boil. And as soon as the water is boiling, as it is right now, you need to add some syrup. Now, one word of caution. Please, never add the syrup directly into the heated pot while it's in direct contact with your heat element, whether it be a flame or electric element. Uh, what will happen is this syrup will go straight to the bottom and scorch. That will ruin your batch. So the first thing you want to do before you add this syrup is turn off the heat. And I will demonstrate how easy it is to pour in the syrup. Simply, if you want, you can take a taste of it. It's pretty good. Now while you're pouring in the syrup, you're going to want to constantly stir. Again, this will avoid the possibility of scorching. So here we go. We have two and a half gallons. And I'm going to slowly stir in the syrup, making sure that it's well mixed. Making sure that it doesn't settle on the bottom and scorch. And I will not turn this, I will not return this to the boil until I know that the syrup is mixed in. It takes a few minutes because this is this is very thick, very thick like molasses or honey. It's got a wonderful aroma. And usually you need to scrape some out. Later on, I'm going to add another canister of malt to this beer. And to facilitate the pouring of it, I put it in a hot water bath over here. And that'll loosen up that malt or that syrup and allow you to pour it a lot easier. Now, will I have to scrape it? Yes, I will. It's just one of those things you got to do. But uh, again, it helps you uh, extract every last precious drop of that malt syrup. Now this is beer at the boiling phase. You want to watch this though because if this pot boils over, you're in big trouble. You got a big mess. So what you do if it starts to boil over is you just simply kill the heat. Sometimes you have to remove it from the heat source, but usually just killing the heat will do fine. And there's an old saying that a watch pot never boils. Well in home brewing, we add to that saying and we say that an unwatched pot always boils over, and it will. So be careful, watch out, make sure that you don't boil over. That's the way your boil should look. At this point, we have a boil, and the directions say add one ounce of hops. So I'm gonna add these hop pellets to the kettle, and I'm gonna watch out for boil over. At the same time, after I add them, I've got to set the timer for 40 minutes. So here goes. The hops are added. Oh, they smell great. I'm going to have to stir them a little bit. And I wish you were here to smell that aroma with me. It is wonderful. Okay, now it's time for me to set the timer for 40 minutes. And I'll watch and make sure it doesn't boil over. There we go, timer set. And now we have to wait before our next edition of malt. Now I've got the second edition of malt sitting there in a hot water bath. Usually with a recipe, they'll tell you to add all the malt in at once. 
But with this recipe, they're going to have it added after 40 minutes. As per the directions, we're going to add the second can of malt and then we'll set the timer for an additional 15 minutes. Now I've let this warm to facilitate pouring. I'm going to open it up. And get some of that sweet malt into the beer. Put this here. And please remember to cut your heat before you put the malt in, otherwise you'll get scorching. And here goes. Slowly pour it in. Stirring constantly is very important because even though we've turned off the heat, it's still hot at the bottom. So you have some conductive heat that's going to affect the, uh, the syrup if it hits the bottom and stays there. So as long as we're stirring it about, it's not going to sit in one area all concentrated and scorch. And it's going to take me about five minutes to get this all taken care of. Okay, here we go. Now I'm going to stir for a bit and then I'll apply the heat again. And when I turn the heat back on, I'm going to set the timer for 15 minutes. Now, I've got this well stirred in. I'm not worried about the possibility of scorching. So I'm going to turn the heat back on, get it back up to boiling. And at this point, according to our directions right here, I'm going to set the timer for 15 minutes. While we're waiting on the beer, I'd like to say a few things about the importance of sanitation. Anything that comes in contact with the beer after it's boiled has to be sanitized. Now sanitation or sanitizing is completely different from cleaning. Think of it this way, if you clean your fermenter, your carboy or something, you're removing the solids and the things that you can see. That's cleaning. But there's also things that you can't see, microbes that will infect your beer. Those, you have to use a sanitizing agent. And what we like to use, a lot of people like to use, is this, this brand called Star Sand. The beauty of this is it only needs 30 seconds contact with the brewing equipment. Okay. You do not have to rinse with it. You just pour it out and it's done. I'm using some right now that I poured in here. What I'm going to put in here is the airlock. Now the airlock is used to keep bad air out and allow the carbon dioxide to escape. That's placed right here in the fermenter. We'll do that after we put the beer in. Another thing that needs to be sanitized are these bottle caps. We're going to use those when our beer is finished and we've primed it and we want the beer to um, condition and carbonate. So in go the bottle caps. Another very important thing needs to be sanitized. Essentially what you need to know is once that beer is finished boiling, anything that comes in contact with the beer has to be sanitized. Clean won't do it. It has to be sanitized. This is my yeast. This packet even needs to be sanitized. So it's going in to the sanitizer as well. Our timer just went off and according to the directions, it's time to now add a half an ounce of Holler Tower hops. And I'll just open this up and I will use, well I don't have a knife with me so I will use my teeth. And I'm going to use half of this package and I'm going to pour it in according to the directions. Okay, and right there. That's 
half the package. I'm going to stir it a little bit. And now I need to set the timer for five minutes. After that timer goes off, our beer is done boiling and we'll move it over to the sink to cool it. So let's set the timer right now for five minutes. And all we need to do is wait. The timer just went off. We're finished with the boil. It's time to cut the heat and it's time to pick this up and put it in an ice bath to cool down the wort so we can get ready to pitch the yeast. Is to take this, transfer it over to the ice bath where we're going to let it sit for a while and cool down. It'll work its way down. I'll fill this up with water and it'll take care of the, the wort. We now have wort in here and um, that's all. It's just time. We got to let it cool down. Well, now that we've finished cooling down the beer, we're ready to put it in the fermenter. And what we call this is a primary fermenter, this bucket right here. And I also have another one right here. This has been in contact with a sanitizer um, overnight. Now, it doesn't need to be in contact that long. Uh, all you need is 30 seconds, but it's not going to hurt either. I've been exposing the lid to the sanitizer. Remember, 30 seconds minimum. And what I'm going to do, I've got extra sanitizer. I can keep this and use it again, but I'm going to just dump it out so that I can pour the beer into the primary fermenter. So here goes. Don't need it anymore. I'm going to get rid of it. But watch this. I'm going to kind of swirl it around. Now it's already had contact, but I'm just going to give it some additional contact the edges with the um, sanitizer just to guarantee that I don't get an infected beer. Okay, the surface is, is wet, everything is fine. I do not have to rinse this. It's ready to go. Our beer is cooled down and it's ready to transfer into the fermenter. This is about two and a half gallons of beer. I'm going to be careful to pour it. If there's any sludge in the bottom, I'm going to let that stay behind. So here we go. I've already put a gallon of water in there and what our objective is is to top this up to five gallons. Our pail has graduated marks on it so I'll know when we get to five gallons. Here goes. At this point, it's okay to splash because the yeast likes oxygen. Now there's some of that sludge that I was talking about. I'm going to leave that behind. And it's time to top it up to five gallons. I got some chilled water here. This is spring water. It's clean, sanitary. I should say. Okay, this is working out. We have four gallons. We got room for one more. Now some directions will ask you to uh, go ahead and use tap water. We don't recommend that you do that because tap water uh, contains chlorine and most of us can pick up that aroma and taste in the finished beer. So you want to avoid tap water. That's why we're using spring water for that. At this point should be warm but not hot and it's not it's fine so there's one thing left to do and we've allowed our yeast to sit in the sanitizer for a while I have this knife and the sanitizer remember anything that comes in contact with the beer at this point has to be sanitized so open up the yeast 
And what we're going to do with this is sprinkle it on top of the beer. And I can tell you by this evening or tomorrow morning, this beer will be fermenting away. Let's see what I've done here. Sprinkle that on. And I've got this. I'm going to stir it in. I have a sanitized spoon over here. I'm going to just stir this in. Now when I poured the beer in, I poured it from a distance to create this foam. I want to aerate the wort. And the reason for that is yeast at this stage loves to have some oxygen. And it uses the oxygen to reproduce itself. But then when you get to a certain cell count, it kind of stops reproducing itself. And it's at that point that it actually makes beer. That's when the yeast stops reproducing itself and it starts making CO2 and alcohol. The CO2 will escape out of the airlock. The alcohol will remain. And that's what we like about beer besides the taste. And it's also one of the things that helps preserve the beer. So it's a good thing. Okay, look how frothy that is. That's what you want to do. All right, we've aerated our wort properly. Let's take an original gravity reading. What we're gonna do is find out what the specific gravity of the beer is. So I've sanitized this, sanitized it well, very important. And I've also sanitized a measuring cup. And I'm going to use this measuring cup. It's completely sanitized. I'm going to go into the beer. Okay. I'm going to pour out a sample and get my original gravity reading to see if I'm in it within the proper range. Okay. And I'm, I'm a little finicky about pouring things back into the beer, so I, I dumped a little bit down the drain. But I'd rather do that and make sure I have a clean beer than, than take the risk. <laughs> get rid of some of the foam. Now, when you get a hydrometer like this, usually it, you'll notice there's a bunch of different numbers, a lot of calibrations on all sides. And the one that I want to make sure that I read is the one that's for beer. I don't know if you can see it there or not, but that is the side that I want to read. Now, this is supposed to have a gravity of 47 to 51. So that's 1.047, 1 1.051. Let's see what this is. Okay, you've got the foam in the way a little bit, and it looks like it's actually reading at 5.1, not 5.0. That's good. <laughs> Why do we want this? Well, after the beer finishes fermenting, we're going to want to take what's called a final gravity reading, use the same process, and then we're going to take the difference between the original gravity reading and the final gravity reading and multiply it by a certain number, which I'll show you later. And that'll tell you what the alcohol percentage is of your beer. I'm not going to put this back into the, my fermenter. I'm just going to dump it out. And I'm doing that because sanitation reasons. So at this point, your beer is very vulnerable. Okay, this has been in the sanitizer. Longer than necessary, but uh, long enough to give me peace of mind. Remember, it only needs 30 seconds contact time. And I'm going to put this on right here. Nice and tight. Now, you don't see any action right now, but that yeast is starting to work its magic. 
And what I'm going to do is fill this halfway with some sanitizer. Put the cap on. Insert this into that grommet. I'm going to take my beer and I'm going to put an area that's within the recommended temperature range for this type of beer. 70 degrees would be fine. And I want to make sure that that temperature stays constant. Beer doesn't like wide fluctuations in temperature, so as long as you can keep it constant, your beer is going to be happy. Now we're ready to talk about secondary fermentation. Your beer has been in the primary bucket for a week and it's time to transfer it into this glass carboy. There's a few reasons why you want to do this. The time in the glass carboy will help the flavors come together. It will also mellow out the beer because there will be some sediment in the bottom and you want to get it off of that. There's another advantage to going to a secondary fermentation and that is it'll give you a clearer beer in the end. So you want to do that. So simply all you have to do is have your pail up here and then you take your sanitized siphon hose and your siphon and you siphon the beer. Now this is just an illustration into there and once try to keep the racking cane from collecting all the sludge in the bottom. So just take it off the bottom a little bit. Let it siphon in. And again, this is just for illustrative purposes. So we would fill this up and when it's completely full, then we would do what we've done before and that is get a sanitized, oops, we get a sanitized airlock. Put a stopper in. We put an airlock in. And we're going to want to add some sanitizer to it. Put that on. And that's it. All right, two weeks have gone by. Our beer has been in the secondary and it is ready to bottle. So we have to take our priming sugar, five uh, ounces, it's close to three fourths of a cup. And we're gonna pour it in here and we're gonna let that soak in and we're gonna bring it to a boil and we're going to add that to our flat beer. Now we've taken our sugar, uh, added it to the boiling water, we've let it cool down a little bit, and now we're going to add it right into a bottling bucket, straight in. And I'm going to take, a, take off the airlock, and put that in some sanitizer over here. I'm going to take my sanitized siphoning tube and actually this product is called an auto siphon. See how it works? It's great. You, know, you don't have to uh, suck on the hose to, to get a siphon going. Uh, so no worries about infection there. And also because this is star sand, we don't have to worry about the star sand coming in contact with the beer. It won't hurt a thing. So we add this in right here. and we begin the siphon. And our finished beer is going to mix with the sugar water. And I'm going to try to keep it off of the um, off the bottom because there is sediment here and uh, we really don't need to introduce any more sediment in. So there would have been a lot more sediment if we had not removed this beer from the primary fermenter. So it's been in glass for two weeks. It's flat and we've got to add this priming sugar in order to get the beer to carbonate in the bottle. Our finished beer is now mixed with the sugar solution and it's ready to put in the bottle. There's a couple ways to sanitize your bottles and believe me you've got to sanitize those bottles 
One way is to use the star sand, 30 minute exposure. Rinse it out. Set it on the platform. Now, you'll notice I'm using a dishwasher because that's another way to sanitize your bottles. What you would do is put the bottles in the dishwasher, set it on the full cycle, set it on the heat dry setting, and that steam heat will sanitize your bottles. You can do that a day before, and when you decide to bottle, open up the door to the dishwasher, and there they are waiting for you to bottle them. Anyway, here's how we do this. We get our siphon started. Notice we have a bottling tube right there. The neat thing about this is it has a little valve in the bottom of it. So you press against the bottle as it fills up. When it gets close to the top, you pull it out. That valve stops the flow of the liquid. Let me demonstrate. Okay, I'm going to get this going first. There'll be a little foam because of the way I had to start it. We're going to rack this beer. This is the finished beer mixed with the sugar. And we're going to go all the way to the top. A little foam. And I'm going to pull this out. And I'm going to hand it to my assistant over here. And notice he's taking some caps out of the sanitizer. He's going to place it on there. Use the levers, go down, and there we go. You want to put that in the case over there? Well, actually, I have another case. We'll wait for just a minute here. Okay, I'll get another bottle out. The sanitizer. Again, I recommend you use a dishwasher. It's a lot easier. You set this down in here. Siphon. Try to get to within about one inch of the top. There we go. And you do this until you have all 48 bottles filled. Okay, you've, you've capped all your bottles. You fill the case. What you want to do next is you want to find a spot in your house where the temperature doesn't fluctuate, that, where the temperature ranges between 65 and 70 degrees, and you want to store that beer. Uh, we're lucky, this, this room uh, happens to be within that temperature range. I'm going to store them in the case so no light hits it. This room stays about 70 degrees. It's perfect. Now we're going to wait for two weeks and then after two weeks we're going to test to see if the bottles have carbonated to our liking and if at the end of two weeks it hasn't then we're going to put them back in the case. We're going to wait another week. All right our beer's finished. There's only one thing left to do and that's to chill it and share it with friends. So you hear that sound? And that's what we want to hear. And let's pour this baby. Okay. Here you go. Try it. See if it's any good. It smells great. That's what I wanted to hear. And let's see. One for the cameraman. Let's try that stuff. Mm, cheers. Mm -hmm. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay. It does taste good.